Good morning. I'm Kathy Bixell, and thank you for joining us for today's Heaven at 11. It is great to have you on with us today. As you can tell, I am not in my uh, normal recording environment. We have discovered that to optimize um, our live streaming experience, that we are going to have to do our live streaming outside of the office. So in preparation for that, uh, we are today doing a pre-recorded uh, broadcast that we are uh, posting live so that I can comment and you can comment together as it's posted. And so hopefully next Tuesday, we will be able to, uh, to engage uh, in an actual live stream uh, uh, posting. But for today, I just want to invite you to let us know where you're listening from, uh, to let us know, um, let us know that you are um, coming on to, to view uh, the message. And also, please share this. I think that this is going to be um, just an important message for many of us to hear in this season. We're going to be talking about today about when things do not go as planned, right? And um, that can that is an experience right now for a lot of people. And if it isn't right now, I guarantee it's going to happen one day. Or um, you you have already experienced that in one form or another, where um, we have been disappointed, um, even to the point of despairing, where it seemingly feels that God has not come through in a way that we expected him to. And over the next 30 minutes, I don't anticipate at all having all the answers for you. But what I do want to do is to provide you with some keys for how to move forward through and out of disappointment because you have to. And um, in the in the words I, I was reading uh, this week, and it was just blessed me, and I've been meditating on it uh, repeatedly, the words of the great theologian Austin Sparks. And I don't know if you've ever read any of his devotionals or commentaries um, or his writings, but he is just um, is just a insightful theologian on making um, the Word of God practical for how what we experience in life. And disappointment is certainly um, a relevant experience for every human being on this planet. Christian or non-Christian, but for us as believers, um, th it is important for us to always remember, and I have to remind myself to always remember that what we are walking through is in context of our relationship and our communion with the Lord. As people of God, as children of God, sons and daughters of God, we are in Christ. We belong to a Father who loves us. And so we have to um, process what is happening when we are disappointed, when we are mourning, when we are grieving, when we are suffering, when we are in pain over, um, you know, dashed hopes or expectations, um, that we have to remember that there's the bigger picture of our walk with God. And to highlight that, Austin Sparks talks about how, and I, and I want to say this to you, if you don't get anything else the rest of the 30 minutes, but you leave with this, you've done, you've had some heaven at 11:05 or what, whatever that is you've had some you've had some heaven come into your life and that is that what you are walking through right now what you are experiencing i know what i'm experiencing in my life um and and having to process um in in a season Yes, what maybe is uh, have I have experienced personally in my walk that I've walked through and I'm on the other side now, and I've shared with my um, my listening audience some of those experiences in my life. But how many of you know? Because we are the body of Christ. When something happens to someone else in the body, we feel it, we experience it because we are one. We are part of the body, and. 
So what I want to remind you of that Spark said is that where you are and what you are experiencing today, it is not everything. It is not the whole story. This is not the end. Are you ready for this? Because it's not the end of God. It's not your end because it's not the end of God. And there is even more to your story, even if it is death. It is not the end because it is not the end of God. And so in all of these type of experiences in life, when I, when I'm, I may not get an answer, but I at least want some understanding on how to move forward, how to experience God's love for me and God's rescue while I'm walking through pain and disappointment. The place to go is the word of God. The word of God in every situation is relevant. It's relevant to you in every situation or any situation that you're walking through. People think the Bible is a big rule book. No, the Bible is, is the, the expression of God. The, the, you know, the, the, the word of God is the expression and the revelation of God. And then when Jesus came, he was the word in flesh. As we talked about last week, he was the word manifested in the, in the flesh. And he demonstrated and modeled the heart of God, how God thinks about things, what what matters to God? He showed us, he was, the, he was the visible expression of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so the first thing you have to do is, is open your Bible. You know, I remember my, mo my mother raising three young children in the early 60s by herself um, as a single mom. And opening, I would walk by her room at night and see this big old, it was like this thick, this big old Catholic Bible as she was laying on her bed, laying on her stomach that she had fallen asleep reading the Bible that she, I, that the only way she knew she could get through what she had to do was to have God's help. And the scriptures were what paved her pathway forward. And so I just wanted today highlight two scriptures for you. And I want you to meditate, meditate on them through the season that you are walking through. I know many of you listening are enduring loss, transition, grieving over the loss of loved one. Many people are, have lost pets that they've had for like forever. And you may not be a pet owner. I am currently not a pet owner. Um, but, but, that can be, it's like a family member to many people. And so that, that's a legitimate, that's a legitimate loss. And so whatever it is in your life, um, we're going to talk about disappointment um, and throughout the, the uh, next uh, 20 minutes here. But for, for, uh, to start with, I want to just give you these two scriptures. Psalm 34 verses 17 through 19. And I'm going to read to you out of the easy to read version. That means it's not hard for us to understand it, right? As so many people say, the scriptures can be difficult to understand, but they really aren't, especially with the um, so many um, versions you can avail yourself to today. It's, it reads here, pray to the Lord and he will hear you. He will save you from all of your troubles. The Lord is close to those who have suffered disappointment. He saves those who are discouraged. Good people, and that in many other translations says righteous, the righteous. And if you are in Christ Jesus, if you're a Christian, you are made right. You are righteous. Good people may have many problems, but the Lord will take them all away. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us from them all, is what it says in another translation. But listen, it says, good people might have many problems, but the Lord will take them all away. 
That's Psalm 34, verses 17 through 19. And then I'm going to read to you Psalm 42, verses 10 through 11. Don't forget, just share this with someone that you know is going uh, through loss and is grieving and in pain. Even if it's post-production, it's going to be on our YouTube channel. You can go there. It's going to be in our feed. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel, Kathy Bixel. And you can also, it'll be on our feed. You can share it through Facebook. Um, we are hoping to start um, going through, uh, in, using live streaming through Instagram as well. But for today, those would be your only two options because this is such a powerful word for me, where many of us are in, in the world right now, in life. It's where we are in life. Psalm 42 verses 10 through 11, the New American Standard. As a shattering of my bones, my adversaries taunt me. While they say to me all day long, where is your God? Wow. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Why are you in despair, my soul? The psalmist David is, is writing about his own disappointment and how he is emotionally feeling. He says it's like shattering in his bones to hear others look at his life and said, God didn't come through for you. What, where, where's the healing? Where's the miracle? Where's, where's God's bailout for you in your situation? Why aren't you, why aren't you having a breakthrough? And he, it's the, he likens it to the enemy taunting you. And he writes here, he asks himself the question, why are you in despair, my soul? And why are you restless within me? And then he answers the question, wait for God, for I will again praise him for the help of his presence, my God. I will wait for him and I will again praise him for the help of his presence, my God. So these are some of the most powerful scriptures penned by a man described as someone who is after God's own heart. And I, the first thing that he talks about is how the enemy is affecting his mind. And this is where when we have experienced disappointed, a disappointment, and for many of you out there, this is going to be baby steps, but a baby step is better than no step because we have to understand the, the enemy's agenda, what the enemy wants you to experience. He wants you to experience such devastation and manipulate the circumstances that you are in now to cut off all expectation of life. He, of any expectation of anything good, he wants to close the door on it. He wants to cut it off. But David, had an answer. He asked himself, and I believe, not asked himself, but he, he, he said it himself, why are you in despair, O my soul? And this is a reminder too, that in the Hebrew language, soul isn't just the mind. It's, it's the whole It's the whole being. When we are feeling grief and disappointment, it affects all of us. Remember, in, in the Hebrew mindset, it's a, it's a very holistic. So this is why when we suffer disappointment and um, we are struggling, especially in grief, that we, um, we maybe can't sleep, we can't eat, our whole, um, our whole being seems to be consumed with not understanding and the letdown of what has happened. And honestly, in this word, uh, in this, uh, this verse where, where he says here, um, why or asks, why are you in despair? Oh, my soul. Uh, Skip Moen talks about this Hebrew word, and it, it's really uh, uh, helpful here to help us understand, is that uh, describing despair the word despair that's it that we that's in the hebrew that's in the hebrew it's translated in the english but it's despair um the the hebrews have an understanding of the word despair that um 
has a specific imagery to it, as all, most Hebrew language does, which is why, why I love it. And uh, he, he said that the word seha, S-A-H-A-H, it's translated for us in English as despair, but it literally ha- is the picture of a sinking down, a uh, listen to this, a melting away to be brought low. The picture it paints is bringing myself down. I am melting myself away. Um, it is, it is what David is saying is, why am I making myself melt away? Why am I taking myself down. He's being inundated with these negative thoughts, the emotions of the loss. David had been going through a string of back-to-back emotionally stressful events in his life. That's where this, what the, the climax of all those events was this chapter in the Psalms, Psalm 42. And so he's describing this despair and it's as if he's melting away. Have you ever felt so disappointed in something that you just want to disappear? Like, I know that sounds, you, you don't want, you don't want to talk to anybody. You don't want anybody to see you. You don't, you know, you, 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 you don't want to have to, to even think about anything. You just kind of, you just want to become invisible. Well, I'm telling you, you have to come out in the light now. You, you can't be invisible, but that's the word. That's the picture that the Hebrew language paints. But there's also in this in this text the the verb to despair. I am despairing, which is the word hama, h a m a, which is to cry aloud, to mourn, to rage, to roar, to make noise. It says um, in the translations, "Why is my soul disquieted in me?" And that's actually a bad translation of the word despair, and uh, because it's actually a roaring mourning. Um, there's more involved here. It's a strong emotional cry of why God, why did this happen? Where, where, where were you? Right. It's, and it's coming out of your, of your very being and disappointment can actually manifest in two, in two ways. And I, and I think it's important that I highlight both of them. The first is the disappointment in yourself. When you have failed God, you have failed God's expectations. And, you know, you've, you, your own sinfulness or you, you, you've tried to get free of something or you're working on getting free from something or you had a goal, let's say, you, you know, you wanted to just free yourself of um, behaviors that you know are not healthy and you fail at it. Um, or you're, you're, you know, the scripture says that, you know, that anger is not the way that God works. And so you've been, you've been working on deep breathing and and meditating in the word and not letting anger control your life, but yet you just had a big explosion. And you can spiral down in saying, I'm 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 just never reaching my goal. I'm never, I'm never, it doesn't look like I'm transforming. So it's what you believe are God's expectations and also the expectations in yourself. And they can have the same depressive melting away response. The second is, of course, more predominantly, I find, is our disappointment in God that he says he's never going to disappoint us. Then why are we disappointed? Why didn't this happen the way it was supposed to happen? And so there may not be the answer to that unless the Lord gives you a specific answer. But what do you do? What keys can you turn to open that door to get you out of that, to get you out, get you moving out of the disappointment? And so his answer is here. Yeah, he says, uh, the answer is here. I will, let me read these scriptures again. The answer is here. Uh, I will wait for God. I will yet praise him. And it is the word for wait, Yahal. You're probably thinking, oh gosh, she's saying wait. But there's, this is so powerful. And I'm just going to read this to you so I don't, I don't miss the point. 
It is the Hebrew word yahal, and it is actually um, from the theological word book of the Old Testament. So it gives you the strongest understanding of what he's, what he's saying here when he says to wait on God. And then in this, in this word book, it, it reads, this is not just wishful imagination, this waiting on God, because the better Hebrew understanding is the word hope hope. And it is not, as this dictionary describes, just wishful imagination, just thinking, I wish this would go away. I wish I would feel better. But this is what it says. It says, this is just not wishful imagination that God says, just hope in me, just hope in my presence so that he pacifies us or makes us feel better. No, this hope is the solid ground of expectation for the righteous. As such, it is directed towards God. The psalmist twice commands in Psalm 130, verse 7, O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is loving kindness, his hasad, his mercy, and with him is abundant redemption. It is the patient trust, the waiting, the hoping for a good future. God is God, and we are not. And what David is saying is what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hope in God. Because in God is my future. He has a plan. I have to trust him. I'm going to submit to his lordship, to his godness, to his, to his glory, to his providence, to who he is. Because I know this is not the end because he hasn't ended. And this feels like the end. This feels like I can't take a step forward out of this. But because he's alive and he's alive in me, I can. So as we're closing, just some four um, points that I wanted to give you, just some four keys. And one of the things is that the Holy Spirit gave me this picture yesterday. And I like saw it in my eyes. The Lord said, you see the word tried. This is your life in the earth. It is the trial of your faith. You are tried by fire every day because the world lies in sin. I have rescued you through Jesus, but you live in this world. And so through him, he delivers you from the things in the world that the world experiences. And so as you're walking, as you're walking through grief, it's a trial. You're being tried by the circumstances of life. But if you just put that I before the R in tried, you get the word tired. You get the word tired. And I want to speak to those of you and myself that we have become tired because it's been, for some of us, it's been an avalanche of things that haven't turned out the way we expected or hoped for. But I am telling you today that we cannot stay in that disappointment because that's the past. That is the past. We've got to open the door of the past, even if it was last week, and take a step towards today, knowing that God is still here and he has a plan. So some four keys before we close, because we could only do this for 30 minutes to post, a, to post the video today. Number one, we see this time and time again in scripture. Number one, you have to hope in God, have an expectation. Even if you don't understand what's going on, it's not over. Where you are is not it. He is up to something. So hope, there is hope in his presence. Secondly, praise. Yes, he says, David says, I will again praise him. Praise is a weapon. It's a weapon, but because we say it's a weapon, we shouldn't think it's a method. Something happens when we praise. Notice David said, I'll praise you again. 
I've praised you for three or four different things already. Now I'm going to praise you again. I'm going to praise you again. So it shifts the focus off of us onto the Lord. And thirdly, and this is so important, receive his kindness. That's that, that scripture, Psalm, one, Psalm 130 that I just read to you, Psalm 136. Hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is loving kindness. I'll never forget Graham Cook. Many, many years ago, I've always kept this statement that he made, that God is the kindest person he's ever met. So hope in the Lord. Uh, praise the Lord and then receive his kindness. Let his supernatural strength heal your brokenhearted. Remember that scripture from the beginning that he is close to those who are suffered, who have suffered disappointment. Experience his nearness. And then know that supernaturally, he's going to turn your sorrow into joy. Look at what the scripture says. Somehow, God is so powerful, he will turn, maybe not today, but he will turn your mourning into dancing. Only a God can turn mourning into dancing. And the fourth one is the fourth key. So first is hope, praise, receive his kindness. And the fourth key is to remember that he always has the final word. I, it's, it's, the answer is just not brushing your pain away, not being honest about what has happened or where it looks like God didn't answer the prayer. Don't allow that disappointment to keep your, to, to just put a bushel over your hope. Understand that that's what the enemy wants. Because when hope is active, God arrives. He will in our earthen experience. The, that's just that scripture. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them from them all. He delivers us from them all. I don't know what, how that happens, but I'm choosing to trust. Like David, I'm choosing to wait to see how it's going to turn out. And that gives me the strength. You know, I watched my sister-in-law when we, when we lost my husband's twin, Rick, who was like a father to my children. And it's 10 years now that he's been with the Lord. And we, we, it was such a shock to us. And, you know, it, it, it was, and I just remember my sister-in-law walking through things she never thought she had to. And God was with her and she overcame day after day, month after month, where she couldn't even stay in the house by herself. Oh, she's probably going to kill me. I'm saying this, but she won't kill me. But to see her now, she has blossomed and flourished in so many ways. She moved past being tired while she was tried, trusted in God, didn't allow those thoughts to captivate her, and moved forward. And that's what you can do today. I know it. And I will be praying for you. We love you here at Kathy Bixel Ministries. We have to sign off now. Be sure to share this and make sure that you follow us on X, um, on Instagram, if you haven't already done that. And of course, you're already on Facebook or YouTube. We love you. And I know that there is such a, such a joyous, a joyous outcome to what you are walking through. And this isn't, you know, Pollyanna, Pollyanna, whatever <laughs> that is to, you know, say, oh, just, you know, gear yourself up. No, it is because we're going to wait. We're going to hope. We're going to praise. We're going to, uh, we're going to receive and we're going to remember how good God is. And he has you every step of the way. Do not let disappointment close the door on your future. Amen. We love you. God bless you. See you next Tuesday at heaven at 11.